her sake room, which is this bone down here, right? This lower part, almost right above your butt crack. Pain there is typically from the pelvic organs. So the bladder is the most anterior, then would be the uterus or prostate, then the rectum. They all sort of stack, you know, bladder, uterus, rectum. They attach from the front of the pubic bone to the sacrum back here. So oftentimes when they're not happy, they sort of pull on the sacrum. The nerves that innervate the sensory go to the sacral area as well, and it can cause a lot of achiness. The other thing that's interesting is those organs in that space is very vascularized. So if you have any sort of stagnation or sort of bloating or excess of vascular um, things happening there, sort of like if you're menstruating, right? If you have a lot of blood flow into the area, that can create like kind of a backup of the fluid and cause some pain too. Just rubbing on that area can be pain relieving. So sort of down low, just rubbing on that whole area. Next, because it does relate to your vascular and lymphatic flow quite a bit, we're going to open up the left side, the left thoracic duct. So this area right on top of the clavicle here, you can just take two fingers above your clavicle and do like a skin stretch. You can do clavicle mobility, or you can just do tapping in that area. Or another one I like is using the quarters ball, doing the skin stretch in that area. Again, left side. The left thoracic duct is gonna be what drains the lower extremity and the trunk. Also, since the vascular and lymph have a lot to do with that area of the sacrum and those organs, you wanna make sure that you get uh, around the liver, specifically the portal vein of the liver, because that helps to drain that part of the pelvis. The portal vein is um, a little bit more um, anterior on the liver. So where laying on your side on the quarters ball, like the general liver compression is good. You can also just use the ball to grab a skin stretch on there. So you're gonna be maybe three fingers from the midline. You're going to be on the skin. You can do a skin stretch either direction, whichever feels good to you. Maybe even flex forward a little bit and then have this downward pull towards the belly button and then see if your body wants to go somewhere and just move into extension, right rotation, or direct stretch. You can do that a few times. If you don't have a ball, you can just use your thumbs too. You'll just grab the skin right under your rib cage there and pull down towards the belly button. Same thing, kind of Follow it first in a flexion. Then when it feels like it starts to change into your hands, then add right side bending, extension, and right rotation. Next, what you're gonna do is the other side of where that vasculature drains, which is the left anterior hip. It's gonna be the inferior mesenteric artery and vein around the sigmoid colon. So we'll do a hip flexor release for that with a soft ball on the left side. I'll demonstrate that very quickly. The last thing I'll do is sort of like a sacral float. So I'm gonna use a prop, it can be a ball or it can be a yoga block. And it's going to push the sacrum more anterior towards the pubic bone, which basically takes the sacrum and the pubic bone closer together, which pushes those ligaments that hold those organs in the pelvis on a little bit of slack and allows them to sort of like rearrange as needed. Plus it just gives a little bit more proprioception to the joint, um, which always makes every joint feel better to 
having that compressive of reception. Depending on how sore you are will depend on the prop and you can just kind of see what feels best for you. I know that when I'm real sore, I actually like the firmer prop of the um, yoga block, but um, the quarters ball or a Franklin ball works great too. So you'll place that underneath you on the sacrum, low enough so it's not in your low back. From here, you're gonna take your legs wide, dorsiflex your feet, and then let your knees come together. That just opens the SI joint up a little bit and allows for a little bit more space for the sacrum to get pushed anteriorly. The other thing that you can add is on the side of your pelvis here, you can press the ilium tore in and down towards the pubic bone, in and down towards the pubic bone. That just helps that inflare a little bit more and again, more space to float the sacrum up. This should feel really good, relieving, decompressive, and you can just breathe here. Inhaling through your nose, feeling how when you inhale through your nose, your pelvis sort of widens and that float feels even more apparent and then exhaling can be out the mouth or out the nose. After you've done a few breaths there or spent some time in this position, you can slowly gently come out of it, lift your hips back up, lower down. And then the last thing that you can do is movement in that area. This you'll want a ball for, a small ball like the Franklin ball. You're going to put it in a similar spot right above your butt crack there, maybe a tiny bit higher. And then as you inhale, you're going to let your tail reach down towards the ground. And as you exhale, you'll feel this want to rock back this way, send your tail between your legs. So pelvic locks, inhaling and exhaling. You can still do with your knees together to allow a little bit more float in space if you'd like, as long as it's not painful. Mashing it to your breath is ideal as opposed to just going through the motions. So start the inhale breath, feel the movement. Start the exhale breath, feel the movement follow. Give those a try and let me know how it goes.